Everybody dies. That includes you too, my friend. Someday, you'll be underground. Everyone. You can't escape this. Someday, you are going to die. It's impossible to imagine, isn't it? And equally hard to accept, right? Today, I'm going to bring you face to face with death. And understand this, I'm speaking to you, just you, no one else. I'm not talking about the death of a stranger. I'm talking about you. I hope my words will help you, inshallah. Let's do this. Imagine that it's Friday and you're in this room to listen to an Islamic lecture. The atmosphere is good. Everyone is friendly and having a good time. There's tea to drink. To you, it's just an ordinary day, nothing unusual. The lecture finishes and you leave. The spiritual atmosphere makes you think. You recall all the sins and mistakes you've committed in your life. And you realize that you haven't even bothered to seek forgiveness. You weren't truly sorry for your sins. That's why you couldn't repent. You dismiss these thoughts and leave the building. You head across the street to your car. You're going to drive home. But suddenly, everything changes. You hear a loud noise. It's the horn of a car. You freeze and stand there. And then something happens to you. Something you never imagined could happen. Something that happens to thousands of people daily. You see it all in slow motion. The impact of the crash throws you in the air. A million thoughts fill your mind. Like a rag doll, your body hits the ground, bounces, tumbles, and finally stops. You're lying in the street. You realize this isn't a movie. This is really happening. It's real. Time seems to stand still. Where are your friends? You need their help. The wail of sirens fills the streets. The air feels heavy. And suddenly, a crowd surrounds you. Slowly, weakly, you look around. You can barely move. There's blood everywhere. Could it be yours? You're drenched in blood. Terrible thoughts come. Is it all over? Is this the end? I'm still young. How can I? How can I die? Death happens to the old, not to me. Guess what? There are thousands of graves filled with young people just like you. People who were born in the 90s, born in 1992, 2000, or even later. And today, it might be your turn to die. So you lie there, covered in blood, and the ambulance sirens get louder. People around you are panicking, shouting, and arguing. There's noise and crowds. It's chaotic. You listen to what they're saying. Come on, boy, breathe, just breathe. Oh my God, what's happening? What's going on? In this nightmarish movie, you are the main character. You can feel the blood drain out of you onto the street. You feel cold, start to shiver. You feel your body getting numb. Strong hands move your body. You're being carried. They put you in an ambulance. The ambulance speeds away. The siren is loud now. The driver shouts, Move out of the way! Come on, move! The ambulance approaches the hospital. The paramedics try to stop the bleeding. They try desperately to help you. But you're badly hurt. Now, you arrive at the hospital and suddenly, medical staff surround you. They start emergency surgery. They try to save you. They try to keep you in this world, but you're a whisker away from death. You can feel your hold on life ebb away. You've never come so close to the end. Emotions well up inside you, filling the air around you. The atmosphere becomes heavy. The people around you sense 
what you're feeling. What are you feeling? In a word, regret. Your heart is breaking. You don't want to die. You weakly whisper, just one more chance. The medical staff work frantically. You have one thought. Save me. A strident beeping noise interrupts your thoughts. What's happening? What does this sound mean? What's wrong? The surgeon's demeanor changes. He was striving to save you, but now he stands there looking hurt and sorrowful. His face tells you what's happening. Even though your wounds are still open, he turns and walks away. He's walking away? Why? More medical staff leave. Six, then five, then four. And now, you're alone. You sense a presence, distant at first. There's someone looking in the window of the surgery. They were allowed in. Who's there? Who's watching you? Let's rewind 15 minutes. At your parents' house, the phone rings. Your mother answers the phone, listens and says, Yes, that's me. Suddenly her face crumples, tears course down her cheeks, and she lets out a heartbroken cry. My child! It's your mother. She is watching you, hopelessly. She opens her hands for prayer. Ya Rab, please forgive my son. Please let him live. He's still so young. He isn't on the right path. I know, not on your path yet. His life is full of mistakes, Ya Rab. Don't take him now, I beg you. Not now, Ya Allah. She's begging Allah, my friend. But the doctors and nurses are gone. They left you all alone in that cold surgery. Is this it? The moment your soul leaves your body? Yes, it's time. Now you see him. The angel of death. Azrael, alayhi salam. An angel who was going to appear as a friend to you if you had lived in Allah's path. But, of course, you didn't choose that path. You remember your past, the alcohol, the nightclubs. Remember? You didn't protect yourself. You looked at hara. You made excuses. You didn't care and sought fatwas in your favor. And this moment, my friend, is the moment you feel remorse because Israel doesn't welcome you as a friend. He appears to you as the frightening angel of torment it's clear you're not going to paradise. If you were, Israel wouldn't have scared you like that. Israel has come to separate your soul from your body. You let out your last breath and open your eyes. What do you see? There are people above you, peering down at you. They threw you in a hole. It's cold and dark here. You say, what's going on? Where am I going? To paradise or to hell? But no, my friend, you're not going anywhere. Because first, there's the grave. The torment of the grave awaits those who couldn't please Allah. There are so many familiar people around you. Your loved ones, your mom, brothers, sisters, all your best friends and mates. People who are closer than family. People with whom you committed hundreds of sins. They are looking down at you from above, my friend. They're not with you in that hole. You're alone. You feel the guilt and regret fill your soul. You want to go back. You hear the Imam speak. A few words tumble out of his mouth. You listen to the Quran during your life. But this time, the Imam is looking at you and reading the Qur'an for your soul. Your loved ones come closer. They start throwing more earth on you than anyone else. Those closest to you 
cover you in the most dirt. You can feel the vibration of the shovel hitting the dirt. The person you love most comes to put the pieces of timber on you. You are in a white shroud. Life has gone. It's over. What did you gain? What are you left with? You deceived me. Fake world. You deceived me with empty things, with TV, with movies. You destroyed my life, tempting me with haram. And now you leave me with nothing, empty-handed. Where's your property now? Where are your possessions? What happened? You thought highly of yourself. Go on, get in the ground. Feel the embrace of the cold earth. There is no light here. They're throwing dirt on you. The world was filled with color, but here, all there is, is darkness. Not even a pinprick of light, nor color. This is your new home. Welcome to your grave. This is where you'll stay. The regret you're feeling? If only you had felt it when you were alive. You want to open your hands and beg, but you're too late. Because the earth embraces you tightly. You can't do anything but grind your teeth. You're helpless. And now, when it's too late, you're sorry. The one who gave you sustenance since birth and provided for you, gave you a mother that whose love surrounded you your whole life, the one you were ungrateful to. You're filled with regret. You think, shame on me. What a fool I was full of shame. You want to kick yourself for being so naive, but you can't. You beg. Ya Allah, I swear. Wallahi, I regret everything. Please, Ya Allah, I beg you, give me another chance. Send me back to the world. I didn't realize that I would be left hopeless with empty hands. I lied to myself with the fantasies of this world. This false world betrayed me. Ya Allah, Please, Ya Rab, I want to breathe. Ya Allah, please give me another chance. I won't raise my head from the sajda till I die. What did I do, man? What did I do? I didn't even read the whole Quran once in my life. What did this ignorance do to me, Ya Allah? Yes, my brothers and sisters, you will beg, grovel, promise, and more but it won't change a thing. No one can help you on that day. Your brother is beside you. You want to shout his name? Shout! Shout as much as you want. No one will hear your voice today. My dear brother, please help me. Why are you leaving me here in this hole? Take my hand. Isn't there anyone who can help me? Mom, my dear mother, you would lose sleep if something happened to me. Mom, I am suffering. Can't you feel it? Can't you see it? Can't you hear me? Why didn't you beat me when I was committing all those sins? While I had missed so many prayers. Dad, brother, my boys, my best friends. I thought we would always be together. Never betray one another. Please, one of you guys, stretch out your hand. Help me. My friend, you can shout as loudly as you can. It won't help. It's no use. There's only one who can hear your voice. Allah. Only Allah can hear you. Do you now understand the meaning of La ilaha illallah? What happened to those people that you held above Allah? Where is your lover? The one who said they would never leave you. The person you loved more than anything. Where is your love today? Where's the money you worshipped as God? You sold your deen for that money, remember? You didn't pray because your boss didn't allow it at work. You sold your deen for a paycheck and chose worldly rewards? Show me, man. Show me. Where's your boss now? Where's all your money? Only Allah can hear you. La ilaha illallah. But you don't have a good relationship with Allah. You wronged him. You can't even open your hands to make dua. My friend, you cry so much that the earth surrounding you is getting wet. This is your new home. 
and here you'll be tormented until the day of judgment. Every single morning and every single night, hell will be shown to you. Hell will be your next home forever. You can't ask Allah to finish the torment of the grave for you and let you move on to your external life because what's awaiting you is hell and hell is worse than the grave. You can't just ask for it to stop. You will be tormented. Is that what you want? Do you need that? Let me tell you about hell. Hell is worse than anything I've told you already. Is there a need, my friends? I ask you, is there a need? Is there a need to waste your life with meaningless things? Do you really need to ruin your afterlife, to exchange your akhirah for this world, for this perishing dunya? There may be people who watch this presentation, Muslims who don't pray five times a day, or who don't even pray at all. What happened? We always had an excuse, didn't we? I don't pray because of this. I don't pray because of that. These excuses won't save you once you're underground. No one will say, okay, let this one pass. He was a good person. Come to your senses. You might ask, what does this guy think he is yelling at me? I'm here to help you. I have something against your nafs. I get nothing for helping you. I don't get any money. I do this because I want to help you, my brothers and sisters, to save your akhirah. Your Lord wants to forgive you. In a hadith Qudsi, Allah says, My mercy dominated my wrath. In another hadith Qudsi, Allah says, If my servant takes one step towards me, I will take ten steps towards him. If my servant walks towards me, I will run towards him. You see, Allah wants to forgive you. So take one step, just one step. Lay down your prayer mat today and say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Ya Rab, I will come to your presence five times a day. Starting today, please accept me. There's no other door besides yours. And if you still try to come up with excuses, after hearing what I'm saying, I tell you that these excuses come from the devil, the shaitan. Like a fool, you allowed him to take 15, 20 years of your life. Today is the time to come to your senses and hold on to the dawa of Islam. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, says, The grave is either a hole from hell or it is one of the gardens from paradise. May Allah grant us these gardens, inshallah. Let us be of those who say, Let death come and take me. I am ready to meet my Lord. Let us say, O oh, Azrael, welcome. Let him come to us as a friend. Let us embrace this great angel. Let us say, take me. Take me to our prophet, peace be upon him. I'm missing him. Take me to my Rabb. Let me meet the one who has been providing for me. Let us see who is taking care of us all. Let us meet our creator. Let our grave be a garden of paradise. Let us see each other there as well. And then let us enter paradise to live forever. Amin. There's no need, no need at all, my brothers and sisters. There's really no need to become the wood, to become the fuel for hellfire, all for the sake of a few sins. O oh, my munificent creator, and compassionate sustainer. Your creature and servant is both rebellious and impotent, heedless, ignorant, sick, base, a sinner, aged, a wrongdoer, like a runaway slave. But after 40 years, he has repented and wants to return to your court. He seeks refuge in your mercy. He confesses his countless sins and errors, suffering from doubt and every sort of affliction, he beseeches you and entreats you. If out of your perfect mercy, you accept him, if you forgive and have mercy on him, that is any way your greatness. 
For you are the most merciful of the merciful. If you do not accept me, which door can I approach? What other door is there? There is no sustainer other than you whose court may be approached. There is no true object of worship other than you in whom I can seek refuge.